I think the fact that I loved it. You, do you know what I mean? Like when you're just doing something and you would do it for free, mm -hmm. that you know you're in the right place. for 30 years. And then she transitioned into owning her own business, a talent agency. Welcome to We're Not Dead Yet, women rocking their next chapter. Don't forget to subscribe, like the videos, and share with your friends. I'm here with Shannon Bell of Forward the Agency, but she wasn't always a talent agent. Shannon, you have a 30-year career as a model, or okay. had a 30-year yes. career as a model. Yes. How did you get into modeling? That means you started when you were five, right? Yes, that's exactly okay. what that means. No, but I, what, I, I was, you weren't far off, 10 years. <laughs> I was uh, 15 and my mom put me in a little modeling workshop thing because she just, my mom was raised on a farm and raised by farmers. And then she had this girl that was interested in fashion and everybody said she should model. And um, so she put me in this little class just to try to give me the skills that she didn't have, not thinking that that's what I was gonna do. But lo and behold, I ended up signing with an agency and uh, going overseas and then working in New York and back here in Atlanta. What were some of your favorite highlights of your modeling career? Oh, um, honestly, it's so funny, especially being based out of Atlanta. You hear all of these stories, nightmare stories, right? Of girls in the modeling world. Yes. So my mom was ob obviously very concerned mm -hmm. um, when she knew nothing about it. It wasn't that for me. I, I, I was more, instead of high fashion, I was more commercial and lifestyle print. I did a lot of catalogs. So I'm working with people like you and I. Yeah. Um, and, and just making great friends through the business. And I still, to this day, there's seven of us and we're super, super close. And we get together as often as we can. And our children have been raised together and we celebrate birthdays and life together. One of them just had their first grandbabies. So. And that is Anastasia from a previous episode. And yeah. that is how I found you. It is, it is. So my little rock star mo models, we call ourselves the mod squad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, but yeah, so there's, they were still really close. I would say that's, that's probably what I got the most the out of it. Is, friends. Yeah, it was kind of my sorority that lasted for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what Anastasia said. She didn't really have a traditional college experience yeah. so that these women were her sorority. Yeah. Yeah. We are sorority sisters. You've so. got to find your people. You do. You do. And it was, it was really fun to be a part of the creative process. Uh, even though you weren't the one that was start to finish, but you got to be the end result, a part of something that somebody spent six months to mm -hmm. a year putting together, and then you get to be a part of it and help bring it to life. That was really fun. Yeah, the creative side mm -hmm. of you. Did you think you would eventually transition to something else? Or Oh, well, sure. I think... I, I, you would never assume that you could model forever. I modeled way longer than I thought I could, but I did not think that I would be an agent and have an agency. People would say to me all the time, you should think about um, being an agent. And I was like, no way, but here I am, never say never. And so what, what made you think that you would not enjoy being an agent? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I just, felt like that wasn't what I wanted to do. Wasn't, really did it. Wasn't your calling. Mm -mm, it wasn't, it wasn't. God had different plans, but. <laughs> so along the way, you were modeling, you were also a mom. Uh, yes, so I, when I was 30, I um, had twins, four girl twins, Brandon and Kayla. And um, at that point, so I, I got a camera for the first time and fell in love with photography because I've, I've never had anything really to shoot before. <laughs> Babies will do that. Right, right. <laughs> and then I started photographing my friend's kids and then started photographing their friend's kids. And so I kind of had a, a children's 
photography business that just organically grew out of a passion. Mm -hmm. I understood lighting, I understood composition because of what we did, what I did for a living. Sure. Right? Um, I, but I didn't understand a camera, so I kind of came at it backwards. But I knew how to pose people, I knew how to find the right lighting, I knew how to scrim, I knew, you know, just right. the, the, being in the business for so long. Make people feel comfortable. Right, cause, right, because I've been that person. Doesn't matter how good of a photographer you are, if the person is stiff. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I um, started shooting and then my agency didn't have children. So they would call me often and say, hey, have you shot a cute three-year-old? Hey, have you shot a cute mm -hmm. six-year-old? Um, and I luckily had, or I also, my either where my kids went to school or where we went to church or where we were involved in the community, we all, I could always find what they yeah, needed. Yeah, because you were a mom. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. And you're, so whether it's the soccer team or the whatever it is <laughs> right. that my kids are a part of. What do you need? What do you need? I can find them. <laughs> I got a network of moms. That's right. So yeah, the, my, the agency would call, I would book. So I probably did that for about 10 years. Uh -huh. um, I, would, I was still modeling. I would shoot on the weekend with families. I would be on set and kind of edit during downtime. Yeah. But uh, then it, people found out that I had a connection to kids. And so they started calling me direct. So it was what was once... A month became once a week that started to become once a day. Mm. So I really didn't have an option but to open an agency. So when I first started, I was just a children's agency. We, I started this in 2015, the same time Atlanta really took off mm -hmm. with the movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people around the country don't necessarily know that Atlanta is now, <clears throat> is it still the so, well, we biggest used, So for we film? used to be third, so mm -hmm. it was, of course, New York and LA right. and then Atlanta. Atlanta has become really, really hot. Yeah. We shoot a lot here. But so things really started to take off in the TV and film as well as commercials. So that was really my focus. Good timing. It, yeah. The timing was great. So we got so busy that my husband quit his job six months later and came and worked with me and helped me to build it. He has since gone on back to, into the workforce so that I could hire other people. Um, and I have an awesome team here at the agency that helped me make it all happen. I know it happened organically, mm -hmm. but were there points where you said, do I really want to do this? Well, <laughs> or I, did you never look back? I fired myself multiple times. <laughs> I quit often. <laughs> um, probably, I would say my main saying that I say all the time to everyone on my team is that just fail forward. Mm. You, you, you got to get out there. You got to try. You got to make your mistakes. I've never ran a business right. before, right? right? So I didn't know how to do spreadsheets. I live in spreadsheets now. I was like, what do I do? You know, um, Google, you can learn a lot on Google. Yes. <laughs> it teaches you everything, right? Right. And, you know, back in the day, we didn't have that. I know. Now that we're 50, we've I got know. all the resources. There's, there are benefits. <laughs> there are benefits. Right. So I, um, there was a lot of just teaching myself. Yeah. Um, and failing forward, making a mistake, going, well, I won't make that one again. And just picking myself up and keep going. When did you determine that this was your passion? I think the fact that I loved it. You, do you know what I mean? Like when you're just doing something and you would do it for free, mm -hmm. that you know you're in the right place. And I can remember coming into work one day and it's a Monday and my husband's like, oh, it's Monday. And I was like, it's Monday. <laughs> That's when I knew I had my passion, yeah. right? Yeah. Like I was doing something that I actually, I, I looked forward to. I couldn't mm -hmm. wait to get up and get here. And, and I love helping people reach their dreams, which that's what this is about. Yeah. You try to find people that you go, oh my gosh, you're bookable. I, you're I, a dream maker. You can, you, uh, you have potential. Yeah. Now let's see if we can help you get where you want to go. That is exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's fun. It's heartbreaking too. Cause you know, you gotta, you gotta kiss a lot of frogs. You gotta audition a lot. You do. And you, you, you gotta keep, keep at, you gotta, there are a lot of no's, a lot of no's mm -hmm. to get to the yeses. Yeah. Yeah. When I walked in, there was a big sign uh, on the wall that said fostering transformation. Is that what it that's says? A, that's what it says. Okay. What significance yeah. does that have? So fostering transformation is my life motto. Okay. So I have a friend, her name's Kelly Conwisher, who started a business called Life Unique. And Life Unique helps you figure out what your uh, passions are and where they meet your goals. 
So the, the uh, your gifts, where that you meet your gifts, your passions meet your gifts, and what you're called to do, hmm. right? You take all of these tests and you figure out more about you and what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. Matter of fact, even everybody that I have hired to work with me uh, fill in the gaps. They they happen to have their strengths or my weaknesses. I don't need any more me's. Right? <laughs> I've got enough me. Um, so I don't know. Sometimes I'd like to have one or two more me's. <laughs> I don't need any more me. I need people to fill in my but weaknesses. If I had a staff of eight, I would need one or two more me's. <laughs> I need people to fill in where I'm not strong. So it, it's it's a really it's a great reality check to figure out what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are, so that you're playing up your strengths mm -hmm. and you learn how to play up your weaknesses. Um, so it, then they help you bring down what your life motto is, what your life goal is. And mine's fostering transformation so that I know whenever somebody says, hey, Shannon, would you do this project? Would you volunteer here? Would you do this? Does it fit in that crossroads that we talked about? Am I fostering transformation by saying yes to this? Mm -hmm. Because how many times have you said yes to something and it didn't fill your you feel your soul. You're, it's draining, right? <laughs> many. <laughs> but how many times have you done something and you left going, that was awesome, right? Absolutely. That's what we want to say yes to, the yes. things that fill us, not the things that drain us. So I know that my cross, where that, where that crossroad is for me is when I'm fostering transformation. So what does that look like? So for my business, my goal is to take somebody that this is their dream and how do I foster that to be what they want to do, right? So how I get to do that. With my children, I try to be really intentional on my, am I fostering transformation? If I'm asked to volunteer somewhere, how am I fostering transformation? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. So I, I keep it, it's a big sign when I walk in so that I keep that um, so close. When, what led you to do this class and, and how old were you when you did this? So I did it four years ago. Was it four or five? Somewhere in that uh -huh. range. Uh, my girlfriend was starting this business and taking tools that are already out there and then help people package it to figure out what their what their life mission is, right? What is God calling them to do? Were you, did you know <laughs> that you were missing this at the time? I didn't. <laughs> did it. Why did I do it? I did it because my friends said you're going to do this. And it was kind of life changing, right? Yeah. It really was. It gave me the chance to understand myself better. My children also did it. So it was really great. It really showed us what their strengths were and they did it before they left for college so that they had that information where they knew um, going in, okay, well, here's my strengths. Here's my weaknesses. Here's where I'm going to need help. Here's where I'm not. And every, you know, it's a two-sided coin. You've Every, every strength comes with a negative side too. So I happen to have a big personality. I think pro there's also problems with big personalities, <laughs> right? Like, so trying to understand and how to manage that too. Um, were you surprised at what you settled on? What, like your No, your you know what, I wasn't surprised. But I was so happy to put it in a little package with a bow on it so mm -hmm. that I could say, so I could pinpoint this is what makes me happy. And be conscious about it. Yeah. Yeah. Where I'm really intentional. Yeah. That was a motivation behind this channel mm -hmm. is so many women get to our phase. Mm -hmm. You kind of evolved into this business. So many have either just been raising children or been doing a job that you know they like, but they get to their 50s and say, is that all there is? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. What am I done? Yeah. What you know, what there must be something else. And so that's interesting that Well, and you know what I would say too is is you're, you've got to figure out what it is that feels that that makes you feel good, what fuels your fire, right? And then, so let's just say it's photography so that we could do an example. What I would recommend doing is start shooting and start giving it away. Whatever you want to do, give it, start giving it away and you'll be amazed at what comes back. So you shoot your friends, kids, your, your, you volunteer your church or this event and you just start giving it away. And the next thing you know, people are at, then asking for you. You've got to get your name out there somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's catering, cater for free. Work for some caterers, then start catering on your own. Do it for the cost. 
where you're not making any money at first, but you're getting out there, you're working, you're doing something that, that you love and you're passionate about, the money will come. Yes. It, the money is not, if you're worried about the money from the beginning, then it's not going to happen. Well, also, I think a lot of ventures that women or people in general think that they might take on, they think, oh my gosh, I don't have the money to start that. Yeah. I don't have the money to start a business. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you didn't set out to start a business and hang a shingle. And at no point did I go, I money. have this chunk of money. <laughs> what do I want to do with it? Right. No, I just started working. You kind of did what you're suggesting yeah. people do. Yeah, I just got out there and got you busy. Just, you got some kids some jobs for free and then made yeah. a little money here and there. And yeah, and and, to, and worked for free and, and would help casting directors put some stuff together. and Just really I learned as I went. But I, uh, yeah, it's not, it can't be about the money if, at first. The money will come, but you've got to put the work in first. So what words of wisdom would you have for somebody who is in their midlife and wanting to start following their passion, but might be afraid to try? Yeah, yeah. I would say, give it away. Give it away. Volunteer. It, let's just use photography, for example. If photography is what you're into, figure out, find somebody that you would want to shoot for free. Uh, volunteer for an event. Do baptisms at your church. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that you can, can give it away, you'll be shocked at how it will come back to you, right? So, so find places to practice. It's also what a great way. If you mess up and nobody was paying you, that's okay, right? Like they... they it is what it is. You get what you get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would hate to do that on a really big paying job though. Yes. So just start volunteering and giving things away and get your, get yourself out into the community mm -hmm. so people know about you is probably the greatest thing that I could recommend. That's beautiful advice. Yeah. I hope yeah. more women will. Yeah, absolutely.